turn now uh, to water. And we heard uh, that four out of five South Africans now have access to piped water. That's according to our latest census. But it's the frequency and quality of the supply that has got many of us worried. The Hammondskraal cholera outbreak earlier this year is an extreme example of what can go horribly wrong. In the last two months or so, we've seen protests in Johannesburg suburbs. You saw that clip we played a little earlier, people complaining about the water mafia. Um, and often what we're seeing now is a deterioration of piped water supply. I'm joined now by Professor Tali Palmer, Director of the Institute of Water Research at Rhodes University, also a water scientist. She took an active role in water law reform in the 1990s, and she joins us from London this evening. Prof, thank you so much for your time. So you've been involved and, and deeply committed to how water should be supplied, that it's a constitutional right, uh, that everyone deserves access to water. When you look at what we're facing now, areas that have had piped water for decades are now not, are either not getting water or are not getting good quality water. Um, how do you feel? I think both um, disappointed and optimistic, which may sound a little at odds. I think we were always going to face a huge challenge in looking after our water. And I think that we are facing that, but I think we're in a good position to go forward. Um, so what do we do? Because there are a myriad of problems. You know, we're talking corruption, pollution of our waterways, lack of expertise, non-payment of services, municipal neglect. I mean, it's just, it's, it seems insurmountable. Where do we start? What do we need to do? So if you have any complex system, any space where there are a large number of interacting factors and something is going wrong, we all look for a silver bullet, a single thing that will make it better. And actually, it doesn't work like that. We have to find the major levers and work at them all at the same time. Now, some of the work that we've been doing indicates that the primary um, lever that we have is trust building and that it is the relationships between people that will be, enable us to go forward. So we need people in municipalities to be willing to talk to and work with the people that they are trying to supply. There are real serious difficulties in making large complex systems work, cities and equally getting piped water to small towns. But we do need to make the best of the people that we have and the equipment and infrastructure that we have. It comes a lot down to governance and the institutional strength and the willingness of people to use the systems that we have well. It's interesting because um, I know that you're based at Rhodes University, even though you're uh, in England at the moment. And of course, Rhodes is my alma mater. And I know that Makanda, Grahamstown, has faced the most awful water situation. So if you talk about trust building, which could be central to all the issues that water supply is facing, apply it to the city um, and, and how it can be helped. So right now, Settlers Dam in Makande is overflowing for the first time in many years. And at the same time, people don't have water in their taps. And the difficulty is that pipes and pumps are broken and are not easily replaced and made effective for delivery. Now, we're not exactly sure what the difficulty with our municipality is, but if you take the fact that procurement is complex and difficult, that there is an underlying set of circumstances where there is corruption, where large numbers of people are not able to do the kinds of jobs that they have been employed to do. You need to start, I think, by putting teams together between the municipality and different organizations with skills. For example, in, I mean, in Grahamstown, in Makanda, the, the university is a set of skills and we have tried very hard to connect with the municipality, to work with them, to implement the kinds of processes that will increase trust between people and, the, and, and local government. It's really important that households begin to waterproof themselves, that as we have houses, we need to have gutters, we need to have rain tanks, we need to have small water 
to, we need to have water containers in houses that can be kept filled with safe water. There are a whole lot of processes that individuals and families can do to keep themselves better water supplied. And in the meantime, we need our local government to be willing to talk to and work with teams of people who are able to build trust and link expertise and take us forward. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point you make that the solutions really get down to um, having the right communication, um, having honest people doing the right thing at the right time, and at the same time making sure that vulnerable citizens in particular um, are able to protect themselves for potential further problems in water supply. Um, do you think that the um, right at the top, so that's right at the bottom, but right at the top with our water affairs uh, minister, water and sanitation minister, are they on the right page? Are they moving in the right direction in your opinion? Well, I believe that water needs to be managed as an integrated whole. Yeah. So I think that we are enormously dependent on looking after the water resource. So our actual catchments, the places where rain falls, that we need to look after good quality water across our whole landscape. And then we have to intimately connect the rivers and dams with the supply with our local government. Now we do have some very good institutional mechanisms. We have something called Blue Drop, which is a way of scoring our water treatment works, and Green Drop, which is a way of scoring our wastewater treatment works. But we're not very good at making those results of auditing those scoring systems available so that people can see exactly where things are failing. We do need a radical upgrade and attention to, for example, wastewater treatment works. If we want water quality in our cities and our taps to be better, we need the quality coming into our water treatment works to be better, and we need the water treatment works to work better. And so we have to harness government towards linking the Water Act, which looks after water across the catchment, with the Water Services Act, which is our legal instrument for water being delivered to people. So there's a lot of connecting to be done to make it work better. Will linking the Water Act and the Water Services Act, I mean, is that a, a legal change that needs to take place? And how will that make a difference in, in real life? I think legal instruments are helpful. I don't think they make things work. Um, so I think it's always helpful to have people looking at the ways in which the law structures what we do. I think on the ground, if we could get a message or a, a, a process in place that said it is a national priority to upgrade water treatment works and sewage treatment works, then that would be a huge step forward. You know. People don't really like talking about poo, do they? And we need... We well, need a lot of people I know just love it. <laughs> Lots of jokes made we, in my household. <laughs> we really need good functional sewage treatment works. And, you know, municipalities don't always want to spend their money in that direction. And so um, the, the kind of trust building that is needed is where people will understand that the rates and taxes that they do pay end up being used to look after infrastructure and upgrade it. It's all quite, it's all quite mundane and ordinary. It's housekeeping. It's mm. the way we need to behave. So there's a story out of Makanda that's really interesting because Helen Holloman started something called River Rescue. Um, where she goes into our extremely grubby little streams with gumboots and um, protective gear and picks up waste. Hmm. And people have started in our various communities to join her to help clear things up. And if each of us were to do our own water housekeeping so that we are concerned with what water around us looks like, that we are concerned about how much water we use and what we flush down our sinks and the kinds of chemicals that we use. If each of us takes responsibility for using less, 
for taking care of the products that we use and for calling our, particularly our local governments to account in the way in which funds are used to upgrade and maintain water infrastructure. You know, we're going to have to be really good at this because climate change is real. And we are going to face both extreme droughts and big disruptions with lots of water falling and floods. We're going to need all of the resilience and capacity that we have to do the best we have with what we've got. And so if we can each start to learn to take responsibility for ourselves, for our small towns, for our cities, mm. and do the kind of housekeeping that says when things are broken, you fix it, that you plan in advance for the spares that you need, that you look at the elements that are going to be audited when you want to know whether your system is working correctly. It's It sounds a little mundane, but housekeeping really is sometimes. Yeah, and as we've learned uh, with ESCOM, uh, maintenance, et cetera, is quite mundane until it all goes wrong and then it becomes a national crisis and the writing is on the wall for water and you've uh, been so eloquent in explaining that it starts with us, it has to be a holistic approach and it needs to be built on trust relationships. Thank you so much water scientist Professor Tally Palmer, she's also director of the Institute of Water Research at Rhodes University. All right.